We provide expert knowledge and advice on existing and emerging mainstream technologies. And we work for a catalyst for change in the multiple areas of access. We are committed to increasing the awareness of access to the following um, with the provision of audio description and captioning for television, DVD and video, cinema, theatre performances, exhibitions, other media, that's new media, media is changing all the time, and educational settings and that's where I come in and I develop pilot programs to uh, work in schools to help the students who are deaf or hearing impaired access curriculum support materials in a captioned format. Now, we're formerly known as the Australian Caption Centre. Could you raise your hand if you remember the Australian Caption Centre at all? Okay, there's a few people. The Australian Caption Centre was active for about 25 years and it had a dual role of advocating for services for people with hearing impairment and then also providing captioning services. And over time that became apparent that there might have been a conflict of interest. So the service was divested uh, into two. One forming the advocacy side, and that is Media Access Australia, and then the captioning services were sold to Red Bean Media. And you may actually notice Red Bean Media on the bottom of your television screen uh, because they're a, a caption provider. So Media Access Australia looks after the advocacy for captions. And we're based in Sydney, and we have a satellite office in Perth. Uh, we work in collaboration with government, industry, and consumer groups. So what is captioning? Could you please give me a show of hands for who understands what captions are? Okay, so we've got about a 50-50. Captioning is the transcription of the audio elements. Sorry? Did someone say something? Oh, that's okay, fine. Now, you notice I, I have directional problems. I can't tell where the signal's coming from. So when you ask me a question later, you'll watch my head go looking for you. So um, looking at the audio elements of a TV program, a movie, a DVD, a performance, and giving access to people who have hearing impairment or deafness. Um, unlike subtitles, captions provide information about the song lyrics description of sound effects and music and are often positioned and coloured to uh, denote certain speakers speaking. So what's the difference between open and closed captions? Closed captions give you the option. You can turn them on and off. Open captions don't and they remain permanently on the screen. Now, I love captions. I've been using captions for a very long time and I grew up um, with a mother who was deaf who loved captions. So from a very young age I thought captions were wonderful and I'm very excited to be here talking to you about them today because they provide information on music and sound effects and I particularly love this slide. I think it shows us why captions are so powerful. We're looking here, this is Colin Friels, and he's saying, were they important? And the, the other actor sighs. And we all know, if we're hearing impaired, that we can't hear a sigh very well on a television program. And so we don't have the context. What did that sigh mean? Now let's see if we can see that woman's face, the complete full frontal look at her face, or do we see her side on? We'll see this in a minute. In the, sorry, it's on the next slide. I'll go back. We've got a side on. So we don't know what that side means. That side is important because it provides context for the next thing that Colin Friels is going to say. So if we can't hear it, we've already lost the context. So captions give us that context so we can keep connected to the DVD or the video and we can gain further understanding from the provision of context. And captions in education provide context to hearing impaired and deaf students and that's how they can learn 
from uh, the video or DVD they're watching for educational purposes. Now, um, subtitles are a translation of a foreign language and they always appear on the bottom of the screen. Whereas captions, um, true captions, are positioned near the speaker and they're coloured to denote a different colour for, for different speakers. Now, there's types of captions. There's prepared captions and they come in blocks of text. Now, these captions are superior. They are synchronised with the soundtrack and they have correct grammar and punctuation and spelling. And so you can see the difference from uh, block captions rather than live captioning and we'll talk about that in a moment. And they shouldn't be too fast to read. Now there has been a lot of research on caption speed and uh, there's a particular uh, speed at the moment. It's considered a person with um, an average reading ability should be able to cope with 120 words per minute on the screen. But they're not flashing up, as you know. 120 words per minute um, is uh, considered the normal speed. And they should describe music and sound effects. Now, prepared captions. Is there something wrong with this screen? Can anyone tell me what it might be? Yes? Yes, thank you. There's a blocking of information. So now this caption uh, is badly placed, it actually did occur, and that was an object of complaint. And that's why we have a screenshot of that and we use that uh, when we talk about captions. So the caption should not obscure any other information. Um, now live captions. I'm sure you have all watched captioned, uh, well not all of you, but a lot of people might have watched the news and turned on the captions. And that you'll find there's this time lag and often the spelling's atrocious, there's no punctuation. <laughs> well, Media Access Australia tries valiantly to do something about that. We are constantly uh, lobbying government. We liaise closely with government and industry. And a lot of the issues on uh, quality of captions relate um, to a phasing in period for um, how much caption content there needs to be and there's no quality standards at the moment. So it's going to be a long journey but eventually um, we will get there. As will other organisations who lobby for the same thing. And I, I would like to comment that you, you as individuals um, are lobbyists as well. So if you are noticing when you're watching a TV program that has captions on it, live captions, and they're not, the spelling's not good enough, or you're seeing that there's captions hanging on the screen, called hanging captions, because they just stay there, you can ring up the television station and actually complain about that. And they need to direct all their complaints are uh, logged. So that over time, if there's sufficient complaints, that's people power. Yes, sir? The only problem, pardon me. I, I understand that. No change. One has to hear one's own voice. One of the problems is ringing this television station you used to get a machine. Press one, press two, press three, and so forth. They're not talking to somebody. Yes, what, what was just uh, noted that often when people ring television stations, they get a machine and they get uh, you have to um, push a number of buttons to get through. But um, I think that's just there for the uh, large generation of calls. I don't know that they're necessarily blocking complaints, but I think if people wish to make a complaint, you can also uh, send a complaint to Media Access Australia and we can forward it on for you. Yes? How are the, um, the live captions generated? Is it automatic by computer or is it typing? Uh, the question was, how are live captions generated? Is it automatic via a computer or is someone typing them? Actually, there's two methods. There are, there are people called stenographers, which I, I know a lot of you would be aware of the term stenographer. When we relate that to captioning, they have a particular typewriter that it looks very, very different to the, to the old-fashioned typewriter. And so those people actually uh, caption 
as they hear. And then there's the use of uh, voice activated software where the stenographer listens to the voice and re-speaks it um, into software, into voice activated software. So there's, a, a, there's something like uh, a quarter of the population have the ability to listen and then re-speak what they hear and continue to do that, which is an amazing skill that I don't have. So um, let's move on. Um, I want to move on talking about um, live captions, but now let's move on what captions are, what programs are captioned. Now, prime time in Australia is between 6 and 10.30 p.m. All free-to-air stations by law must provide caption programs on the free-to-air stations in the primary channels. So that's ABC1, Channel 7, Channel 10, etc. Now, when we get to um, digital multi-channels, that's ABC2, 3, uh, etc., they must screen caption content that was uh, screened on their primary channel if it was captioned. But at the moment, um, they uh, have uh, more leeway, unfortunately, that they don't have to, by law, uh, provide captions for their other content, except over time, they will be expected to do so. Now, the difference between analog televisions and digital televisions. Now, analog televisions are the ones we all had years ago, and a lot of us still have them. Um, that they will become redundant with the rollout of the digital television, and they can only display <coughs> captions if they have a text button. Digital televisions, the newer televisions, um, they operate using different technology and offer a wider range of channels. Now, it's a replacement technology for the free-to-air or analog services, and they exist in most areas of Australia. Now, you can purchase a digital set-top box to connect to your analog television to be able to access the multi-channels like uh, SBS2 or ABC3 or Go or one of those stations like that. Digital set-top boxes don't suffer the drop-up dropout rate or they don't have as many jumbled words. And they can display captions with their various fonts and colours. But when you go to buy a digital set-top box because they're being sold and promoted for uh, analogue television to have some conversion to, to get the multi-channels, if you're wanting captioning you really need to ask them to find the most suitable digital set-top box for you because not all of them display captions as well as they might. So it's a bit of buyer beware. Or buyer aware, whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> How do I get tap captions on a digital TV or set-top box? Now, um, there'll often be a button on the remote control which activates the captions. This may be labelled subtitle or sub, sub T or CC or have a television symbol on it with a line at the bottom or you might just get a coloured button. And in some models, the captions can be activated by going to the setup menu. Now, I, I'm getting the impression that these presentations might be put up on the website. So I'm hoping that's the case with mine because I've got a lot of written information here. So if you want to refer to it, um, I'm sure that um, that will be provided. And if we find it's not, um, I'm going to leave a couple of cards here later that you can email me or ring me and I can provide you with a copy of the presentation. Now, digital TV records programs uh, with a digital set-top box. My focal length is, I, I can't, I'm too, I can't quite see it. If I get over here, then I'm too far away from you. So, <laughs> um, you can connect to any D VCR or DVD recorder and record caption programs. You can't record um, caption programs on an analog TV without um, a teletext feature and many hard disk recorders and PVRs, personal video recorders, record captions straight to the hard disk, like a computer drive. 
these are more expensive, but they have a lot of other features. Now, um, purchasing. As I mentioned before, uh, you need to be sure that you try before you buy in the shop so that you're happy with the quality of the captions that uh, a particular set-top box will provide you with. Now, how do I get captions on an analogue TV? If you still... Put up your hand if you... Oh, you can tell I'm a teacher, isn't it shocking? <laughs> Put up your hand. <laughs> Just out of interest so that... Um, if you're still using a TV you've had for quite a long time, I'm still using one of those as well. Um, now, how do you watch captions on one of those TVs? You choose the channel that you wish to watch. Then you press the text button on the remote. A black strip will appear at the top of the screen. Have people done this? You haven't? Fantastic. Now I can tell you about it. Uh, I'm really excited about this. So if you've got one of the older TVs, all you need to do is press the text button. Now sometimes it looks like a little television with these little lines on the button. So you push that. It's not instant, but it gives you lovely results. You push that button and then a black strip will appear across the top of the screen. After that, the magic numbers 801 will come up. When you push in 8, push in O, push in 1. And the captions will be superimposed over the TV picture. That doesn't mean it's over the face. The captions will be down the bottom where they should be. And you may need to wait a few seconds for this to happen. So don't panic if you push 801 and nothing happens. It might take 30 seconds. But then you'll have captions on that program. So this is for the older TVs. Then to turn, when you want to change stations, you need to turn those captions off, go to the next station and get, push that little text button, push 801 again, and there you, there you are, you've got captions again. So everyone's got access to captions that way. Now, has, have people here um, made use of the ABC iView? Um, okay, um, I'll explain. ABC iView is catch-up catch up television. So it's television you can watch on your computer. So if you just type in, for those who have computers, if you type in ABC iView into Google search engine, you will come up with the ABC iView site. So what that means is that you can watch some of the shows that were on ABC One the primary channel, the national broadcaster, with captions. Now about 60% of the programs on ABC iView are captioned. I watch ABC iView a lot. I love it. Because what I then do is I plug in a device that connects to my hearing instruments, plug it straight into the computer, but I turn the power off so I don't electrocute myself. <laughs> because I've got a device in my skull, so I don't want direct conduction of electric signal to my head. So I, I pull out the, uh, the power and I run the computer on battery and I get really good quality sound directly to my hearing instrument. Plus, I've got captions. What more could I want? Just the popcorn. You are likely to get the difference. Get pardon? Now, captions on DVD. Now, this is an interesting fact that from 2006 to 2011, they've stayed pretty constant over those five years with all that government lobbying and all the other uh, deafness forum, forum groups working on trying to increase the amount of captions 
are on new release DVDs. So that means if you go to your local video shop, you you have um, and you, and you want to choose a video, only 58% of those new release DVDs will be captioned. So um, just be aware of that. If you're interested in watching DVD videos, um, I mean, <laughs> to caption videos or DVDs, please check on the back of the, the packet. It will indicate whether it has captions or not. So to turn, how much time have I got, Vanessa? Oh, yeah. We're running a bit late. Going. Five, Five minutes, minutes. okay. Thank you. Uh, for DVDs which are captioned, turn the captions on by visiting the set top of the setup or features menu uh, on the DVD. Alternately, if your DVD has a remote, you can push the subtitle button and the DVD, um, the caption should come up. Now, this is the exciting bit. Accessible cinema. People who are hearing impaired or deaf often find the experience of going to the movies a little challenging. So we're very excited that we've been involved with other organisations with the expansion of accessible cinema. So we're talking about cinema that shows captioned movies and also audio described movies for those people who are blind or have low vision. I'll answer the question a little later if that's okay. Um, I just want to make a comment. <laughs> if, at, at the end, if that's okay, um, a number of cinemas now offer sessions with captions. Now to find out where these sessions are, you can go to the website of Media Access Australia, which uh, has a separate website called Your Local Cinema, and we list all the session times nationally for all the accessible cinemas. And there's the website to Your Local Cinema. Now, how caption cinema works? The writing's getting smaller, so that means there's a lot more words. Sorry about that. Um, operates on two systems. Remember we talked about open captions and closed captions? Well, the open caption cinema experience, the captions remain on the movie for all viewers. Now, there's a number of accessible cinemas in Sydney, which I'll get to in a minute. and. If there's a mainstream movie that comes out in an accessible cinema, there are three showings of that movie with open captions. And that's listed on that website I referred to. However, all ma uh, major cinema um, chains are providing uh, the opportunity to switch on closed captions. Now this is the exciting bit. We'll get past all that. Captive View. Captive View is an, a really wonderful cinema experience. You don't have the, you don't put your drink in the drink holder, you put the Captive View unit in the drink holder. And so if you imagine you push that down, you put that in the drink holder, you then, this is a flexible arm, you manipulate the flexible arm and you put that screen in your line of vision for the movie. So you've got the movie in front of you and you've got this device where you can see it. So when the movie comes on, you get the captions on your personal um, Captive View unit and you can see caption cinema. Isn't that exciting? Yes, yes. Yeah. And so the person next to you, they don't have to be disturbed by the captions. The person behind you who's trying to look at the captions can't see them. It's just for you. Wow. And so there, there's closed caption. I, it's so small I can't read it, but I know what I'm talking about. Um, it's it's. They're called a captive view unit, and when you go to the cinemas, which I will show you in a minute, you need to give a form of identification because they're quite expensive. Now, points at Broadway ask for your driver's license, and they lock it in the safe, and then they guarantee that no one's going to tamper with it, so that different cinemas ask for different bits of identification, so that after the movie, you'll bring the device back. Now. Here's the good news. Hoyt's Chatswood at Westfield, Hoyt's Broadway, Events Cinemas Top Ride and Events at Parramatta in Sydney are the cinemas to give patronage to if you're deaf or hearing impaired and you want to see captioned um, cinema. The thing with this um, is that 
Hoyts initially had one screen, so then you could only see that movie that was showing in that. Uh, now they've got a second screen. So over time, uh, more of these places will get more screens. And so then there's screens in this, they're all around the country, but for the rest of New South Wales, these are the places to go. So if you're heading up to Tweed Heads for your holiday, you can catch a, a little bit of cinema for some entertainment if it happens to rain. Now, theatre captioning, we, that was mentioned earlier this morning. Now, a number of major Australian theatre companies are providing captioned theatre, and you can go to our website again, and we will have those addresses. Now, the screen for the captioning is often placed above the proscenium arch, which, is, which goes across the top of the theatre, or I've seen captioned theatre where a screen like this one is just put at the side. So that can overcome some of those problems of not being able to hear live theatre. Now here are some theatre companies that provide uh, captioned theatre. Sydney Theatre Company in Walsh Bay, the Sydney Opera House, Glen Street in Belrose, Upstairs. I saw um, a performance at Upstairs Belvoir with captions, fantastic. You have to do it. And there's Merigon Theatre down in Wollongong. They regularly have captioned theatre performances. And if you find your theatre doesn't offer that, say, why not? Please help me. Okay? Questions? Was that fast enough? <laughs> it's, not so, it's not so much as a question as a comment on the last that the Sydney Theatre. The Sydney Theatre Company at Walsh Bay, I found, is the worst of the worse than a lot acoustically and it's a, it's a new theatre. Now, now as against in New York, you go in there, you can get headphones, you hand in your driver's license, you don't have to pay for it on the way out, you get your license and, and return the earphones. I found it's marvellous where we don't have it here. We don't have many theatres, so it, and, and the latest theatre, the one that was is probably the, the worst acoustically in, in, in Sydney. Yes, uh, I'd like to concur with that, but then I'm being filmed, so... Um, <laughs> I, I think some of the problem with theatre, and I, I went to the theatre the other night, um, which a theatre I won't name, a well-known Sydney theatre, and uh, they, I said I was hearing impaired and I would like to have access to the T-switch. Well, the T-switch buzzed, but there was no voice. And so I think it's a matter of um, afterwards gently talking to staff and saying, look, perhaps the loop's not working because uh, they don't really realise it's not working because they're not really using it. So I think maybe, you know, just a, a little bit of gentle feedback sometimes helps.